Hello everyone. I will be taking you through introduction of research design. Okay, I am Dr. Jaspreet Kaur. I'll be taking you through the types of research design which are there in uh, research. So uh, let me first just give me a minute. Yeah. So let me first come to the phases of research. So primarily, there are six phases of research, introduction, review of literature, research methodology, data gathering, data processing, implications and conclusions. Now, uh, when you come to research design, which is the phase you are at right now? So you are at the phase of uh, research methodology. Okay, so ideally in a PhD thesis or in a, a research paper, whatever you're writing, the part of research design comes into chapter number three, which is research methodology. Okay, so uh, let's see what are the types of research design. Okay. Now, what is a research design first? And you must have read this in many books. Today, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make it a little practical with examples. Okay, so yes, the conceptual part of research design, uh, and because these are technical parts of research methods, you could get it in books like Malhotra and Dash, 2018, uh, research books written by Kothari sir, Saunders, Lewis, and uh, these similar books you could get. Uh, if you want to read a specific research design, for example, you want to read about qualitative research, only about qualitative research, there are specialized research books like Cresswell or qualitative research by uh, Dr. Russell Belk. Mixed method books are also there. So I'll come to that one by one. So. Uh, a research design is like a blueprint of the research. It's like uh, giving a map, a plan to the research. And why I call it a plan is because what sort of a data collection you'll do, what sort of an analysis are you going to do, what sort of an interpretation are you going to do, all the chapters after this and before this depend on the research design. So, research design is a stepwise des description of your research or a sequence in which your research will occur. The research design is based on need of the study. Now, you know, uh, uh, till lately, uh, I think five years ago, if a student, a PhD student came to me, uh, they said, ma'am, uh, please do anything in research, but uh, please, please fit in structural equational modeling into the research. So till till pa past five years, I've been seeing that um, students are, are a little inclined towards the quantitative part of research design. But now lately, what I see in the past one year is that the new PhD students which are getting enrolled and who are under me, uh, they say, ma'am, we want to do mixed method. Okay, so mixed method is a, is, is two methods taken together. But the, the point that I explained to them, the students who used to come to me and say, yeah, you know, ma'am, we can do any topic. Okay, just fit in structural equational modeling into our PhD. Or now when, uh, uh, you know, students come and said, ma'am, we can take any topic. You fit in mixed method into our PhD. Now this is a wrong approach, okay? Simply because there's a new technique or method which has come up, you are trying to fit in that method into your topic that is wrong, okay? You have to first see your topic, see your research questions, and on the basis of that topic, you have to select a research design. But one very big mistake that we people do is that if a particular research design, for example, mixed method nowadays is, is there's, a, there's a lot of hoo hala about, about mixed methods in research. So, so what we do is that we try and force that design on our topic. This is not what we should be doing. The research design is chosen on the basis of the need of the study and this 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 uh, uh, one hour that I'm with you, I'll be giving you examples of the same, of how 
uh, on the basis of need you select a research design the first type of research design and primarily there are three now we are coming up with complicated research designs also but uh, primarily there are ever since i have studied research there have been three research designs one is exploratory another is descriptive and the third one is causal okay descriptive and causal research are together also known as conclusive research okay i'll tell you the reason why descriptive and causal research are called conclusive research i'll i'll take you through the process so um why exploratory first or why i'm explaining exploratory first although researchers are are divided with this philosophy but when i was taught research in my mba my faculty told me that for every topic first there's an exploration then comes description and then comes causal so uh, for him as a faculty he said that this is in a sequence and he's not wrong as i explain it to you it will be in a sequence so first we will do exploration then we will do description then we will come to causal and i'll do all of this for one research problem only because if if i make if i make a flow of first exploration then description then causal for one problem you will understand uh how how this this flow is made also you will understand how these three types of research designs are different from each other okay so i'm going to take one example take you through exploration description and causal i will give you other examples also but one example will be constant so that you understand the difference between the three designs further once these these simple descriptions and data collections are covered now what is coming up now this is very very basic okay something which is taught to uh, phd students during their uh, their their basic uh, research classes but now what is happening is that th this is again bookish knowledge exploration description causal this is bookish bookish knowledge now what is happening is that there are new types of designs coming up okay so this bifurcation has finished and there's something called a mixed method we are doing a, where you're doing an exploration plus you are doing a description you're doing a qualitative you're doing a quantitative you are doing qualitative and quantitative at same time so they are called concurrent research okay you are doing qualitative and quantitative at different time one after another so it is called sequential research so even within research designs there are different types of designs which have come up uh but the basic ones but the basic ones that you need to to start a paper or to start phd or complete phd are exploratory descriptive and causal even the the mixed method that i'm telling you is just a mixture of these basic research so so if you know the basic research designs you will be able to understand what is a concurrent or what is a a, a triangular sort of a mixed method research so Uh, let's come to the first time first uh, type of research and um, i never understood this when i was doing my mba but after i started teaching and i started teaching graduates i started understanding this exploratory research <clears throat> is a research which is loosely defined okay uh, it is not concrete agreed it is a part of the research but it is not definite that what comes out as an outcome of exploration is actually going to happen in real life but it is a type of research the research process is unstructured and flexible so after i do research design i'm going to come to the data collection techniques for each of the research design and you will see that the data collection technique that we use for exploration are unstructured and flexible so they are going to be open ended questions they will not be structured questions i might change the questions while doing a personal interview based on what my respondent is saying so the research process the data collection process the the uh, the uh, uh, interpretations are all unstructured and flexible and i have to make them so because i'm doing exploration i'm exploring something new 
findings are tentative and need further research despite the fact that exploration is a type of research but the findings that you list in exploration are tentative sometimes you might ask when i give you the examples you might ask what is the use of such a research where we have done a research we have listed something but that something is is useless i mean it's it's not actual real findings at all but exploratory research although tentative makes a basis for further types of research design like description and causal okay so you have to have a base that base paper is exploratory <clears throat> the insights of exploratory research have to be cross checked by conclusive research what is conclusive research descriptive and causal together form conclusive research so on any one to topic if you feel okay exploration has been done it's enough let's list the findings my phd is done you would be wrong you have to do exploration and then confirm the results through conclusive research through descriptive or causal research okay and that is the reason nowadays in phd i mean even if your guide is saying mixed method mixed method mixed method it's not that it's a trend they want you to do this whole process they want to want you to go exploratory find out a new variable after finding out a new variable they want you to check the variable through description check the relation of that variable to other factors through causal research okay so they want you to do that process that is the reason mixed method mixed method is so much in fashion nowadays so uh <clears throat> yeah so and and it finds isolated key variables see the 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 uh the the essence of exploration is that i find out a new variable i am not finding out the variables which are already defined by researchers i am finding out the new new variable let me give you an example of the same uh, and and i would like to uh, quote the person from whom i got example i generally do give uh, the leverage to people from whom i have le learned so uh, dr prabhakar of aligarh muslim university i was attending one of his ftps and he gave this example and then i researched on that and i found out this example so he said uh there was a person who said i want to do research about life after death he wanted to do research on what happens after death now this is exploration why is it exploration please let's go back and see information is loosely defined even if we come up with a conclusion of what happens after death it will be loosely defined the method of collection will be unstructured i cannot go to a man and say okay are you dead or not dead yes or no 1 to 2 uh which which uh, which uh, which person did you see 1 2 3 4 i can't do that he's 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 dead and he's come back to life he was declared dead and he came back to life in a minute that is the sample this person chose it has to be unstructured and flexible i'm looking for that new variable <clears throat> why is this exploratory is because this sort of a research had never happened actually nobody knows what happens after death okay so this was a research paper you can see it actually he he told me that there was a research done dr prabhakar told me there was a research done i later on went and found out papers uh, because you know uh, when you talk to an audience saying that okay there was a research done many people don't believe it many people don't believe that there could be a research done where you are studying a person after death okay and what sort of research is it and what sort of finding they'll come out with so that is why i have in the ppt a paper this is a paper in 2008 and it's from journal of psychology and theology okay so this is a published research that i'm talking about i'm not talking about lame examples in this exploration the person wanted to find out what happens after death <clears throat> now how does he get the samples how will you go to a dead body and say okay i want to do a research on what happens after death please help me so what what this person did is he took samples few samples remember in exploratory research we don't take 500 samples we could take somewhere around start with 25 to 60 okay max to max maybe 
right because this is qualitative research this is open ended research you will give one question and the other person will speak for hours together and you will collect that qualitative text data and analyze it that is what is exploration and why are we doing this why are we letting him speak for hours together because we need that new variable a new variable which is not written uh, written in research a new variable which has not yet been found out a new variable where we have no secondary data about it we are on a mission to find out that variable so we better speak less and let him speak more the more he speaks the more he brings his feelings attitudes beliefs perceptions motivations behavior the more textual data we get and the more better the analysis becomes this is primarily exploration is primarily qualitative data analysis okay exploratory uh, exploratory research is never quantitative because quantitative limits you it says yes no one or two uh, choice between these three brands it limits you okay it limits the sample exploration does not limit the sample so these people were asked what they felt after that and uh, how did he get the sample he got a very small sample but that sample were people who were declared dead by the doctor but they came back to life within a minute so there are such rare cases where the doctor does declare the body dead but they revive back to life rare but possible and uh, exploratory is about the rare okay if if uh, if if in medical science i start uh, studying the impact of uh, uh, impact of exercise on blood pressure that's not rare no exploration can be done on that you better go for description and causal so these these phenomena were rare so he picked up those people he asked them what they saw after death he wrote down their narratives okay he wrote down uh, he he had you know some some 25 to 30 transcript what is a transcript when we speak to a person for a personal interview that one person the the data that he gives us qualitative data becomes our transcript so if i have 60 samples i should be having 60 transcripts and these 60 transcripts are then put into a software or manually i start analyzing them so this is an ideal example of exploration now going back to what is exploration despite the fact that this paper is made information is loosely defined nobody can say that absolutely this 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 happens after death research process is unstructured you cannot go to the person and say okay how do you feel after death x y z please mark you can't do that you will have to go you will have to give him one sentence and and just wait for him to give his feelings motivations attitudes about death findings are tentative yes we are not sure this happens after death we have just listed it down and this needs for the research okay uh but we we find isolated key variables if nobody has ever listed what happens after death in this research paper this person is the first one who has listed what up, uh, what happens after death so yes the new variable has come out okay finally whatever he concluded that this happens after death okay that is the new variable and it has come out and it has come out from exploration okay i hope the exploratory research design is clear let me go further uh the conclusive research design includes description okay now let me take the same example just just to explain i'll i'll take the same example now just imagine that uh these these people i'll come to description but let me uh, tell you the findings of the previous research suppose um after death people narrated what happens to them so a few of them said that i saw a light a few of them said i saw god a few said i saw my family a few said i i i saw pick a uh, pick a uh, pitch or uh, darkness a few of them said i don't remember okay so everything was listed in that paper now let's come to description description 
is to describe something which is already there it's as simple something is already there what is already there the variables are already there so which variables are we working on god darkness forgetfulness family angels a flash of light all these variables came out through exploration we didn't know about them initially now in description we associate the variables okay so now if you understand why exploration is important is because you have to find the new variable before association before counting them quantitatively you have to know the variables who gives you the variable exploration gives you the variable so now description associates the variables which are already found in exploration there it could it could be the 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 prediction of a specific problem for example in marketing generally we have problems like what is the sale of a company over here the topic that i'm talking about uh, which is theology the, the the example that i've just given you is theology so here we could make specific predictions about how many times did a person see god how many times did a person see a flash of light how many times did a person see a known person like a family and we list them down in a descriptive quantitative table and we draw conclusions from that so description is quantitative in nature description is done on variables already described already made we find no new variable in descriptive design descriptive design is a pre-planned and structured design so because i know i have to make this table i will go through research and list down how many people said it's it's very structured i'm going to make four columns that's it i'm not going to leave it open ended i'm going to go to the next 25 uh, say 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 100 people because description is done on a, a larger number of samples so in description we could go to somewhere around uh, i have seen generally from 150 to somewhere around 700 samples description it's it's concrete research it's conclusive research you better have 500 samples to conclude something it's going to be a final conclusion people are going to believe in it so it better be a, a large sample you're going to generalize it also okay so uh, it is a pre planned and structured research uh, it is quantitative in nature and it needs a hypothesis we'll come to what hypothesis is but as of now you can say that hypothesis is an assumption okay so if i am doing this research this same research on on dead people in a descriptive way i will first list a hypothesis i will list my research questions and then i will list a hypothesis that most of the people this is an example of an hypothesis most of the people after death have a a a most of the people after death see their family before reviving back to life now this is a hypothesis what will i have to do for this i'll go i'll have to go back to exploratory research count the number of people who saw the family and if maximum saw the family i will say my hypothesis is true quantitative in nature structured planned hypothesis is needed and it is done on variables which we have already found out in exploration okay let me take an example of of descriptive research all of you people uh, uh probably faculties on board you get into a class this is a very very simple example you get into a class uh you you count the number of students okay and and this is an evaluation we are doing on a on a regular basis it's just that we don't know it is being done so description is something we are doing in our classes daily okay so even if it's a phd full time scholar who's going to a class uh, visa be a faculty who's going to the class we are continuously doing a description if i ask you as a faculty if i ask you ma'am in the third year or third level class that you go are there more males or females you will be able to answer me in a minute how are you able to answer me because when you get into the class 
you're teaching that class for six months unknowingly unconsciously you are already doing description you know the variables gender you know the category of variables males and females there's another category which has now come up which is uh, others Okay, so you know. So if you're teaching for six months and I ask you, ma'am, how many males are there? You'll say, okay, these many males are there. If I ask you, ma'am, how many in your class are Asians? You will say, these many are Asians. Variable number two. Variable number two, demographic. In demographic, the, the, uh, the, the residence of the person or the nationality of the sample is the second variable. Describe. It put them into categories, uh, count them, it becomes description. So when you get into the class and you say, okay, I have somewhere around 50% of the class is Asians. So this is the second variable, nationality. You say around 60% around are females. This is a description of the second variable, which is gender. Okay, if you say uh, somewhere around, even you see in the class, somewhere around 90% of the class has black hair. This is the third type of description. So similarly in research, if it is a marketing research, all these people become my consumers. They are my samples. If I am doing a research in the science domain, suppose I am trying to see the impact of a chemical on human beings. All this group becomes my samples for that experiment. If I am into a psychology class, okay, and I want to ask them, okay, describe the Maslow's and I want to see how many of you fall into self-actualization, how many of you fall into self-esteem, how many of you fall into physiological needs in Maslow, which is the, which is the most prominent in you vis-a-vis -vis others. If, if you're in a psychology class, you can number them, categorize them. These become your samples for a psychology problem. These become a, 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 a sample for you for an English class also. If you're working on maze, maybe some something like a description of a word in English. Okay, this becomes a sample for your sociology class also. In case you are asking about about say the 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 farmer protests in India, they become your sample. Political in, in a political science class, if you want to know the impact of the prime minister on the farmers' agitation in India, the longest ever in 2021. 20, okay, so description means describing something which is already there. But while these examples I've given you, have you found out a new variable? No, you have just described the old variable or a variable which was already established like gender, like color of the hair, like nationality of the person. Okay, uh, we generally categorize uh, students into, uh, you know, uh, the ones who are first class and the ones who will be third class, second class. Okay, we, we uh, categorize them on the basis of marks, don't we? So all this is a part of description, quantitative, conclusive, definite, can be generalized and all these things are not there in exploration. These are a few examples of descriptive studies. As you see, they are quantitative. Vis-a-vis -vis this, the paper that I showed you in exploration, it was qualitative. It was textual data. Descriptive studies, mean, median, mode, this all of us have done in our uh, from 7th standard onwards, 7th standard maths, 10th standard maths, mean, median, mode and whichever domain we are from, we always have done mean, median, mode. Let me take the basic descriptors. Let, let's not go to, uh, let's not go to complicated descriptors like correlations and chi-squares that, that will take another workshop of five days. But if I say the basics that you know, mean, median, mode, okay, that is nothing but description. So these are the descriptive tables you see in research papers or in your PhD. Even this is description. If you are noting down the sale of a particular company from this year to this year, uh, the same example in economics could become the GDP growth of India from say 2010 to 2014. Okay. In political science, 
it could become another topic from 2010 to 2014 so so descriptive studies could also be a uh, longitudinal what do you mean by longitudinal it happens over a period of time you note down data for a period of time most of the finance studies economic studies are descriptive studies and longitudinal and these longitudinal studies are done through a technique called time series and panel data so all of you who are into finance or economics domain okay and want to do description your description will primarily be long term okay so you know any economic reform i can't say okay today i asked people tomorrow i summarize no you will have to do it longitudinal over a period of time similarly uh, any financial problem you know so so you'll have to see the data of the company for the past 5 years to to describe and finally conclude something vis a vis that when it comes to the commerce domain marketing hr these people what 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 i also form uh, there's a social sciences domain uh, primarily uh, human resources and marketing commerce domain over there what we can do is we can interview a uh, 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 sorry we can give a survey to a person maybe a consumer of pepsi ask him something then and there and conclude then and there we don't have to wait with the consumer of pepsi for 5 years to know what is his motivation to buy a, a brand like pepsi so that sort of a search where we do it then and there and finish it off say in a week or a month or something like that over a sample of 500 uh, consumers that sort of a research is called cross sectional okay so in description you have two types of research one is longitudinal where you're doing a research for a long period of time you can see over here from 2010 to 2014 and there's a second research which is called cross sectional where you go to the sample take the finding then and there list it then and there take another two months to write down the paper and finally conclude your findings okay so that is descriptive research i hope uh the difference between description and exploration is clear it's it's very very simple and they are just the opposite so where exploration is loosely defined descriptive is conclusive we are in exploration i don't have a definite structure of data collection my my data collection techniques are flexible and open ended in description my data collection techniques are very much structured and they are not open ended they are multiple choice or close ended we are in exploration i cannot generalize it in description i can generalize it in exploration it needs further research to be definite but in description no further research is needed for it to be definite because these findings are real actual and they are more than enough you don't need another research to further say that these are concrete or they are true or they can be generalized so exploration and description if uh, you have understood through these examples another example is uh, comparing two means so i told you there is a mean median mode okay so when you are comparing two means okay at that time also you are doing description so suppose you are comparing the height of a few uh, few uh, you know children over a period of time you are there with them for 5 years and you are comparing the height of say asians to europeans uh, to the south asians uh, to the americans okay so if you are comparing the you uh, uh, children american children to uh, asian children to african children so on and so forth it becomes a comparative study there your research objective will be to compare two or more groups to perform a statistical test it could be a mean median mode it could be an anova it could be a chi it could be anything okay but uh, the the descriptive studies the major descriptive studies which are there are mean median mode these are the very basic ones okay so uh, suppose i'll just give you an example of comparative studies suppose i take asian kids and i take european kids okay i find out the average height of an asian kid from 500 samples i find out the average height of the uh, european kids from a sample of 
okay i set up a hypothesis before this what is the hypothesis that the average of asian height and the average of european height is going to be same you i remember description may you have to set up a hypothesis so i set up a hypothesis that the average of the asian kid will be same as the average of the european kid then i collect data i go to 500 people list their heights okay this is the average of asian i go to 500 europeans list the data okay this is the average height of europeans i compare the two if they are same i say hypothesis accepted if they are not same i say hypothesis rejected okay so this is the whole process i have told you the whole process of descriptive study and there are different types so i told you longitudinal where you know we could collect the economic data or the financial data of a person of of a company sorry over a period of time 10 years okay again there is comparative data where i could compare this to this okay uh, even even uh, psychologically in in psychology studies we could compare uh, asians and their emotional quotient vis-a-vis europeans and their emotional quotient okay politically we could compare a few factors in politics one to another we could compare in economic studies we could compare the fdi of asians versus the fdi of europeans or over a period of 5 years so comparative studies are also a part of description okay so these are the various types of descriptive studies okay uh, let me just summarize what we learned in description it associates a variable which is already found out in exploration i'm not finding out a new variable it has specific predictions whether you're doing comparisons whether you're studying over a long period of time whether you're studying over a short period of time cross sectional or longitudinal data or comparative data there are specific predictions they are pre planned and structured i will come to data collection techniques of description and you will see the data collection techniques are very very structured okay generally we use a survey questionnaire a structured survey questionnaire for descriptive studies hypothesis is needed i explain the hypothesis with the comparative study example height of asians 500 sample height of europeans 500 sample hypothesis both the heights will be simple or hypothesis could also be both the heights will not be same the average of both the heights will not be same hypothesis proven that is supported or not supported accepted or not accepted that is your interpretation of descriptive study descriptive studies are quantitative in nature i have given you three four examples to prove that this is quantitative data it is very very different from exploratory qualitative data so this is the major difference between the major types of uh, two types of research design which is exploration and description